Hello people, in this video we want to look at this topic pilonidal sinus. Pilo is referring to hair, nidus is more like a focal point and sinus you know is this uh, tract, right, elongated tract. Like this is a sinus tract, right, and inside it there is pus and inside it there is hair. So pilonidal sinus. So basically uh, in um, men who drive jeep, right, black men especially, hairy men, what can happen the hair will get dislodged okay whenever it is coming out right and it will poke the sebaceous gland opening right sweat gland sorry sweat gland opening and it will enter and it will cause this kind of abscess which will then rupture to lead to a sinus so that is why hair is outside here this is normal hair but this hair which is inside this cyst, pilonidal cyst, this is not in the normal location. The hair has come from elsewhere to this place. So when you explore the sinus tract, what will you see? Hair. Okay. So this is pilonidal sinus. So here they are showing tuft of hair in the sinus opening. So pilonidal sinus is also called as jeep bottom. Pilonidal sinus actually means nest of hair. I thought hair is correct English and hairs is wrong English. Okay, nest of hair. It is also called as jeep bottom. Just check if you have a jeep, jeep bottom. It is very common in jeep drivers, especially dark people than fair people and especially hairy males. Okay. So they will be around what age? 20 to 30, the age that they drive. Okay. Hairy men are more affected. So hair follicle, you will never see, <clears throat> you will never see the hair follicle in the sinus. What will you not see in the hair, in the sinus? <clears throat> you will not see the hair follicle in the sinus, but you will see hair. That is what is uh, strange. Hair follicle is not demonstrated. You cannot demonstrate hair follicle, but you can demonstrate hair inside the pilonidal sinus. From where is the hair coming from? Around the uh, sweat gland, right? So basically hair accumulates due to vibration and friction, which causes the shedding of the hair. This hair will accumulate in the gluteal cleft. So it will go and get stuck between your two, two buttocks, right? The hair <clears throat> and then it will enter the sweat gland. So as you go into the sinus and check, you will find the pointed end of the hair, dead hair will be inside. Okay, this is dead hair they are saying. Is there anything like alive hair? Now let us look at the clinical features. See, I am very comfortable on this chair. I am not sitting in a jeep. Okay, clinical features. <clears throat> external opening of the sinus just seen above the anal verge. So just before the anal, uh, above the anal verge, you will see this opening. Okay, external opening of the sinus. Okay. There is history of discharge of pus. So he will tell you the pus comes out from there and then there is recurrent abscess with rupture, discharging pus and sometimes they can be asymptomatic also. Uh, you should not get confused. What is the differential diagnosis for this? Osteomyelitis of the bone. That also will discharge sinus and pus, right? Like this. So you should be very careful. You should differentiate from osteomyelitis of the coccyx. Okay. So hit the x-ray of coccyx you should take and rule out osteomyelitis. Now how will you treat? First of all, this is more of a uh, diagnosis, you will inject methylene blue and demonstrate the branches of the sinus. <coughs> See, it's not just there is sinus, okay. The, there could be branches of the sinus. So that is what they are uh, trying uh, They are trying to say. There could be branches of the sinus. So they want to inject what into this? Methylene blue. They want to inject methylene blue and want to demonstrate the branches of the sinus, okay. The patient is positioned in prone positions with buttocks elevated, jackknife position. This is going to be very, very uncomfortable, I'm thinking. This looks very extreme weight. How about this jackknife position? Jackknife position is prone position with buttocks elevated, okay? Now let us uh, look at this. So how, what are you going to do? You're going to excise, right? So you can do it by open method or closed method. Focus here, guys. Only two methods, open method, closed method. Open method, the wound you will leave off open after excision, okay? And then you will just uh, pack it with the iodine, gauze, etc. And then you will allow it to heal. You will have to do regular sits bath. That is, they will have to sit in saline water, etc. Warm water, right? So this will carry, uh, this is better, this method carries the least recurrence. This is better. Wound, open uh, wound if they leave and they let it heal, it will not recur. But closed method, if you close it by Z plasty, etc., there is chance of recurrence will be more. Okay, and in this they'll have to give a rhomboid flap. Limburg flap can be raised to close the defect. So flap means what? A skin, a piece of skin with its own blood vessel. That is a flap, isn't it? So let's draw a flap here. 
So you will close the wound with what? A flap. This flap of skin comes with own, its own blood vessel which will have to anastomose to the blood vessel at the recipient site. So th th this way what you will do, you will close the wound right with skin flap or this is a closed wound but in this recurrence can occur. Okay. So continue here. There are some two procedures here. Carry Dakis procedure and Bascom's procedure. So difficult to remember. Carry Dockey Bascom for what pylonidus sinus? Carry Dockey Bascom. Carry Dockey Bascom. So carry Dockey what you will do? <clears throat> you remove all these sinus tracts and their branches. Okay. Till sacral bone. In this what you will do? Semilateral incision you will do around the sinuses. And then you will do tension free closure. So if you are doing closure it is a closed method obviously. Here they are talking semilateral incision. Right, carry Dakis flap. Now let us go to Bascom's technique. In this uh, procedure, incision is given laterally. Okay, this is not semilateral or midline. This is laterally. This is completely laterally. You will give the incision. After raising the flaps, wide excision. You will do ex excision of the infected sinus. That is the whole point, right? What are you trying to do here? You are trying to excise the infected sinus. This is what you want to do. And the tracts, everything you will do, you will excise. And then you will. Uh, close the midline opening. Interestingly, you, you will close the midline and you leave the lateral as it is. Okay. This is the image they are referring to. <clears throat> so, midline they will close. So, that is what they are showing here. This midline they are seeming to close. Okay. And lateral they leave as is. Okay. So, let us take a complete summary of this um, pylonidal sinus. In the exam, if they say right uh, G bottom, right pylonidal sinus. So basically pylonidal sinus uh, that is um, jeep bottom. So what will happen in uh, black jeep drivers male uh, 20 to 30 years who have lot of hair. When uh, this hair around them right they will get dislodged around this gluteal region and they will come into this gluteal cleft and they will enter the sweat gland okay. And that will lead to abscess and uh, that can burst leading to a sinus Right, and um, these people will have a lot of sinus tracts. So, this can uh, always keep recurring, also, they will keep telling you pus is coming out. So, about the anus, right, there are holes. So, these people, what you will do, you will put them in this uh, jackknife position, you will inject methylene balloon and observe uh, all the tracts, branches of the sinus, and then you will mark the excision area and you will excise. You can either do open or closed. Open uh, In open, the recurrence will be less. But in closed, uh, the recurrence can be more. In closed, you have carry dacus flap. So, you can see here, rhomboid uh, flap. That is Limburg, Limburg flap, which are, they are using to cover after the excision and uh, uh, excision after they excise the sinus and the tracts. Okay. Then, you have another thing called as Bascom, Bascom, right? In which they are doing a lateral incision, then they are uh, uh, cleaning, excising all the sinus and tracts, and then they are closing the middle part, not the lateral, okay? Midline part they are closing here with the flap, you can see here. Interestingly, this pylonidal sinus is not only the midline or over the coccyx, it can happen in the umbilicus and interdigits in barbers. In barbers also, this can happen between the digits because they are always uh, cutting hair, and the hair can get between the fingers okay